Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen, sir. Thanks for that administration. It was so powerful. Thank God. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Honestly, Reverend Nelson. <laughs> Honestly, there's no way we could measure it. But I pray from the depth of my heart that the Lord will increase your anointing on a daily basis. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ha, a lot of people were delivered this evening. Yes. And uh, I see for the next two weeks now, our counseling department shall be busy with the number of souls that took out to accept Christ. Ah, we are most grateful. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank God, sir. Thank you. We thank the Lord for the special impartation we have received through you this evening. Mm. We are so grateful. Elder Juan is uh, the uh, head of protocols. So he'll be going with us to escort you to your hotel so that you can go and have your dinner and have rest ahead of uh, tomorrow's journey. <laughs> Thanks very much for this invitation and the opportunity to come and be a blessing to God's people. Shall we move down? Yes, let's move so that we can take you to your hotel. <laughs> for today we are so so much grateful but i have to step back and you know attend to other meetings here no no, no we problem we appreciate you so much <laughs> thank you so thank take you care of him and we'll see you later thank you Bye. very much all right thank you, you all right see you. yeah thank you. see you <laughs> thank you ah. Man of God. sorry this is uh, our address in the church and uh, this is elder james and uh, we always call him Pa Gibbs. <laughs> and this is um, the women leader, um, Dickness Atta by name. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank God, sir. The administration was so beautiful. The Lord will renew your strength. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> It was so amazing this evening, sir. Our church is revived again. 
and we are so blessed, sir. We thank the Lord for all that he did this evening, sir. Hello. Hello. How are you and the children? Fine. Why are you sounding so cold? I saw that I missed your calls a moment ago. And why didn't you pick the calls? I called, not once, not twice. And you saw the calls, you refused to pick it. I was in a prayer session when you called, I'm sorry. When are you coming back home? How many times will you ask this same question? As many times as it crosses my mind to ask you. Tomorrow morning, they'll be taking me to the airport. And in the evening, I'll be ministering at uh, the Pentecostal Fellowship meeting of the Nigerian Police State Headquarters in Ilori. So we should be expecting you in two days? <sighs> no. Joint Christian Fellowship Annual Alumni Retreat Conference starts tomorrow. I am one of their guest ministers and I'll be taking the plenary sessions for the last three nights. Uh, and that will be up to a month since you left this house. Leaving me alone with these children for three months now. The school board has not paid our salaries. You never cared about how we are doing. You never looked behind to know our welfare. If we have eaten or not. All you do is call from one program in Abuja, another one in Lokoja, sleeping in the various places they put you. You never care to know if we are fine. You never care to know how we are doing. You never want to know don't, how we are fine. Don't worry. I will call you back. I will call you. Wait. Wait, listen, we need you to, your family needs your presence, these children need you. Oh, all right, I've had you, I'll call you back when I get to the hotel. Hello? Hello? What are we going to eat? Put water on the cooker. The gas is finished. What? Gas is finished? When? I tried to put it on now, but I saw it as finished. Oh, God. What are we going to do? What are we going to eat tonight? How are we going to warm this stew?
<laughs> Sir, the room service will bring your dinner shortly. You told us you would prefer rice and all necessary accompaniments. It is well taken care of, sir. Uh, please um, enjoy your dinner and have a good rest. So another protocol officer will come for you tomorrow morning. Okay, sir. Um, it will be here around 9 a.m. Your flight to Ilori tomorrow is around 11 a.m. The airport is just 20 minutes drive away from this place. And um, your breakfast, your breakfast will be ready by 7.30 a.m. Everything has been paid for. <laughs> Thanks very much for this. Thank you. <laughs> um, sir, <clears throat> on behalf of the Council of Elders and the pastorate of this church, mm. we are presenting you with this token. It's just a token. Please accept it. It's nothing much. It's only God that will bless you more abundantly. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you very much for the invitation and all these cares. Thank you. We must confess, the Lord has used you tremendously for us this evening. And the impact of your ministration will stay with us for a very long time. Amen. Amen. Let's be on our way now so, so that we will leave you to enjoy <laughs> your dinner and have a good rest. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. night rest. God bless you. Thank you, sir. to go to the junction to get kerosene. We will use the stove. Go inside and get my person from under the pillow. Esther, what happened? Who took the money I put in my purse this afternoon? I didn't take the money, Mom. I think Samson did. Samson did what? Did he take my money from my purse again? I saw him coming out of your room when he was going out. Esther, that was all the money we have in this house. 3,500 Naira. Oh God, oh God, what is wrong with this boy, eh? What is wrong with this boy? Give me one. Come back here! Where are you coming from? I... I was in... Um... I had to go see a friend to collect information about my post TME results. What information? Was it the one that marked the post jam exam papers? And did you get the information? Answer me! No, he said his, his brother on the campus told him the cut-off mark has been changed to um, 190. And what did you score? 166. You see? You still don't fit in with this attitude of yours. This life of carelessness and indifference. How do you expect to meet up to standard? See the way you are dressed. Despite all my corrections in this house. See your cap facing you. Maybe will, you. will you change the direction of that cap? Child of a minister of God. I was talking to you, and you were walking out on me. What arrogance. I said all those things, 
and not even a single word of apology from you, eh, Samson? I am sorry. Now, I was looking for the money I put in my purse this afternoon, and I couldn't find it. Who took it? I didn't take your money. Ha! Ah, I saw you coming out of mommy's room when you were going out. And did you see me taking mommy's money? Check your pocket. Why, mom? I, I, will, what? <coughs> I need to no, check your mom. pocket. No, no. Why, son? Why? Our cooking gas is finished, and we need to get a liter of kerosene for, for the stove. I sent Esa to get me my purse from inside, and I couldn't find, find my money in it. That 3,500 naira is the only available money in this house, Samson, and you took it. I need to check your pocket. Mom, no! Wow. 250,000 naira. Yes, room service. Oh, hold on, I'm coming. Good day, sir. You're Good welcome. Day, sir. You brought your food as for your sir. Wow. Boiled potato and omelette. Here is plantain and tomato sauce, sir. Chicken and chips with ketchup, sir. Fried rice, chicken and plantain. How do I surmount all these mountains of food before me? What do I bring for the dessert, sir? I'll prefer fruit salad. I need to watch my weight. All right, sir. You'll get your order as soon as possible. Thank you. I forgive you for spending some of the money. Give me the rest. Mom? Yes? Don't tell me you finished spending all the money. Mm, I'm sorry. My friends and I went to the mall to buy some things and we watched some movies. And. Uh... Boom, boom. for me to bear. I can't do this on my own. Help me. Only where are you? Where are you? Why are you doing this to me? Mom! Mom! Come quickly! <laughs> come quickly! <laughs> Esther, what happened? It's something. It's bleeding. 
What? What happened to Samson? He's not talking. Jesus. now, Mrs. Nelson? I don't know. Oh, God. I don't know. He is still not responding. Oh. No, I don't know. Please, just calm down, okay? We are, we are almost there. Calm down. But what really happened? What happened? Have, have you called his father? I caused it. Eh? I caused it, sir. I caused it, too. I was trying to correct him for doing some stupid things. But see me now. I'm more stupid. Oh, Jesus, I need your help. Mrs. I need Nelson. Your help. So you hit him on his head because you were trying to correct him? What kind of a pastor's wife are you? I mean, you were not patient at all in the whole of this situation. Mom, check him again. Check if he's breathing, check his pulse. I can't check anything. I can't check anything. I don't know how to check a pulse. I don't know. I don't know what's thing. I don't know if he's breathing. Jesus! Come my head. Please, please calm down, okay? Mom, let's go, Daddy. Let's call him. Let's go, Daddy. Mom. Oh my God. What will I tell him? What will I tell him? When I called him earlier this evening, he said he will call me back when he gets to the hotel. Until now, he has not called back. He has not called back. He leaves home without looking back. He has gone for almost a month now. Oh, and this is all I get for all my care. God have mercy on me. Please. Please, we are almost there. Please, help us. Please, take away this 
shame from us. And call on your God and take away this shame from us, Pastor. Pastor please, Pastor, please help us. See, it's a strange spirit. It comes on her at an unexpected time. Anytime it comes on her, she's so this is how she's always violent. We can't leave her in the room like this. One time we left her in the house. She ran out of the house, son, to the room. It was God that helped us that the no car was coming. Please, Pastor, help us. Yeah. This spirit wants to give my daughter. Please, Pastor, please help us. Yeah. Ah, Shabaka. What is Shabaka? Do you have any idea of what that name she's calling me? It's her favorite television program. She, she watches it all the time. It's, it's just a children's television program. This is good, Wait, wait, wait. Pastor, has that got anything to do with this? If not, why should she be mentioning that name at this time? Is it the name of a television character in the movie? Yes. The main character is Ishabaka. It's a Japanese character that turns into a wild animal and attacks whoever confronts it. It's just a children's telly movie. Pastor, please. Please. Your, 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 that, that spirit has to be cast out of your daughter to free her. And afterwards, she must never fall in love with such a program. Yes. <laughs> Oh God! Oh God, we never knew this! Debura! 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 Please! You foul and feel the spirit of the devil! I come against you in the name of the Lord Jesus! And I rebuke you in the name of the Lord! I command you now! Get out of her! In the name of Jesus! I rebuke you! I rebuke you! I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. Excuse me. Waiting for me. I'm sorry. I may not be able to attend any counseling for now, sir. I need medical attention urgently. What is wrong with your finger? A girl I was trying to pray for beat my finger. I can't understand this. She's possessed, and I was trying to pray for her. But she turned against me. Ah, I need a doctor. So you see, I can't attend any counseling now, sir. Wouldn't it be necessary you inform the host? And you think that is a good idea? What is rubbish all the good testimonies of my ministry are exploits in their program? I preached and prayed for them. I conducted deliverance services in their church. But a demon in a girl embarrassed and humbled me. Ah, besides, it is outside of their jurisdiction. And um, it's not within their premises. You see what I mean? And will you still be able to proceed with your scheduled appointment to Elon in this morning? And you still have another administration in Port Harcourt? No. Continue with this pain. I have to go back home. How did you know my itinerary? Oh, it's not hidden. You had already told your host about your itinerary. I'm going home. I need help. Actually, you need to get back home as quickly as possible. And I didn't come here to receive counseling from you. I came here to counsel you. Who are you? Your wife called me and reported you to me. She reported your negligence. Since you have married 19 years ago, you are always on the field. You are more on the field than being at home. So you've left her in much pain than the one you are feeling presently. Pain? What pain? Pain of the heart. Here, your finger is bleeding. 
But back at home, our heart is bleeding. Here, I'm having excruciating pain in your fingers. Back at home, she is having an unbearable pain in her heart. Here, a demon-possessed girl beats your finger. But back home, the devil himself is biting her heart. So you see, she carried greater pain than the one you are feeling here. But why? Why? Do you love your wife? Of course I do. Mm -mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because if you love your wife, you will feel the pain in her bleeding heart. You go about preaching from place to place without considering her feeling. You go around healing people without healing your home. Your children don't have the feeling of their father. Hmm. If you are not out of the home, preaching somewhere, you are inside the house, locking yourself inside, preparing sermons for another round of evangelical trip. <laughs> So my wife went to this extent of uh, uh, reporting me to an outsider. Since when have the issues of our home and marriage become uh, issues to be reported and discussed with a third party? She has been nagging me for being busy in ministry. She complains that I don't have time for her and the children. She complains that my ministerial invitations are too many and that they take me out of the house too often. She complains I don't have time for the children. So many nagging and complaints. She married me as an evangelist for God's sake. She knew me before she married me. A week after our wedding, I still went for ministrations. I must fulfill my calling. I must fulfill my ministry. And you think you can have a successful ministry without the full support of your wife? That is exactly what I am saying. This woman is not cooperating with my ministry and calling. Does she want me to sit down at home with her? Why my ministry and calling suffers? Are you calling a ministry not suffering already? You commanded a demon inside the possessed and she didn't respect your authority. She inflicted a wound upon you and made you change your schedule and you are going back home. Are you calling a ministry not being questioned? I think I need to reconsider my earlier plan. I am going ahead with my ministrations in Ilori and Port Harcourt. You can call her and tell her that I will not be back home until all my schedule for this trip is over. Oh, until your ministry is over and your calling is ruined and you come back home in shame and disgrace. What do you mean, sir? <laughs> is this a sort of conspiracy between my wife and you? <laughs> my wife sent you here to discourage me from this ministry, isn't it? Reverend, you still don't get it, do you? When the demon you are supposed to cast out begin to cast you out, then your staff of office is broken and your ministry is gone. So go back home and put your home in order. If your home is not in order, you do not have a ministry at all. When the love and the spirit of your wife is not inside your ministry, it becomes a gateway where the enemy goes in and out at will. What do you mean, sir? <laughs> the sacred words of God, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, says, and I quote, Likewise, husband, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to your wife as a weaker vessel and as ears together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Are your prayers not being hindered already? Think about it. And I will give you another scriptural food for thought. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 28 to 29. So husband ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife, love himself. For no one ever hated himself, but nourishes it 
and cherishes it as Christ also does to the church. So, with these verses, I leave you to ruminate over your life and ministry and do what is needful before it is too late. If your finger is bleeding, our heart is bleeding too. Thank you for the counseling, sir. I am very sorry for my crude behavior towards you. Um, Reverend, are you familiar with the story of Deborah? And uh, the battle against Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army in Judges chapter 4. Yes, sir. I know that story. Deborah, the wife of Lapidus, led the war with Barak, the son of Abinoam, against Sisera, the general of Jabin's army. I preached from the story recently. Yes, I know. I know you know the story. But many people like you have missed the most important aspect of the story, the juiciest part of that story. The role of Jael, the wife of Haba, the Kenite. Jael killed Sisera. Exactly. That is the most important aspect of the story. The enemy left the battlefront and went home to the wife of one of the soldiers of the army. Can you see what I mean? What has that got to do with me? The enemies you are fighting on ministration field have gone home ahead of you. So you've got to go home now as quickly as possible before it is too late. It is well with you. Thank you for your counseling. Sir, I need your phone number. I need to call you when I get back home. And please, keep praying for my family. You see, in order of priority, God is the first on the list of priority. Your home is the second. And your ministry comes last. Any attempt to misplace these priority positions will not work. I will remember your wise counsel, sir. But please, I still need your phone number. Or do I get it from my wife? I can see you are a pastor. Yes. The chief shepherd. I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus in my dream. <sighs> Hello, Esther. Hello, Daddy. What happened? Your call is stranger this time. Where's mommy? Hello. Esther, pull yourself together and talk to me. What happened? Oh. God. Hello, sir. Yes. Who is this? Uh, this is Bolaton speaking, sir. Brother Bolaton. What is going on? What is happening to my family? Where's my wife? And where's Esther? Sir, we have an unpleasant situation at hand. And you need to come home urgently, sir. Brother Bolato, calm down. Y yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need to tell me what is going on. I am a man. What is happening to my family? Sir, it it's, it's something. He's in the hospital. And his case is very, very critical. An emergency, sir. What? Please come home, sir. We, we need you home. What happened? When? Can I speak with him? Or can I speak with my wife or Esther? Sir, there is nothing any one of them can say to you right now. We need you around here. We need you, sir. Why are you people doing this? Can I just speak with one of them? Sir, we'll be waiting for you at Western Point Hospital, sir. Western Point? Western? 
<laughs> yes, sir. Oh, oh, okay, okay. But please, give the phone to either mommy or... Hello? 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 Oh, Jesus. The great shepherd. He told me to go back home before it's too late. Is it too late? Oh, please, show me mercy. Show me mercy. Save my family. Oh, Jesus. Mommy Sam, please calm down. Our God will intervene, please. Eh? Please calm down. Okay, oh, you will fulfill the number of his death. You are first time that when the Lord said I and the children the Lord has given to me. So you will fulfill the number of that one does. Sir Jesus, please. Have you informed his father? And are you sure he'll be back in the morning? Yes, I called him. I told him he has to be here very early in the morning. I'm sure he will be here. Therefore, I would advise that um, we do not take his body to the mortuary yet. In two to three hours, he will come. Yes, uh, can you still hold on till then? I'm sorry, gentlemen. It's a very long time. <sighs> Do you people have an in-house car air service here? I need a car to drive me down to the airport immediately. Sir, I was told your flight to Ilori is at 11.30 a.m. So we have arranged for the hotel shuttle to come take you by 9 a.m. No, I have a change of plan. I'm going back home to Lagos. I just received an urgent call that I have to come back home to Lagos. There's a Lagos flight by 6.30 a.m. I'd like to catch up with that one, please. Any shuttle for me at this time? Sir, I'm afraid. None. The drivers will resume by 7 a.m. And this is just 5 to 5 a.m. All right, thanks. Sir! shock to her. Her blood pressure shot up suddenly. It's abnormally high. So we have no choice than to sedate her. And I am very sure this will calm her down. <laughs> there, you shouldn't have broken the news to your mother. 
you should have waited for your father to arrive in the morning. Sir, oh she, oh she, she just stopped talking and collapsed on the ground. Where she hurt, oh she. Don't worry, dear. We have everything under control, and she will be fine. <laughs> I'm coming. I'll be back in. Uh, <laughs> Yes, sir. Relax, relax. She, she has calmed down. As you can see, she's sleeping. Oh, God. Oh, God. My brother is gone. My mother, no. Oh, God. Uh, the Reverend just called now. He said he's on his way. Oh, good. He has gotten his ticket and he's taking the first flight. Oh, beautiful. He's just waiting for checking and boarding. Okay. Mm. okay. Prabhu I need my phone. I need my phone. Please give me my phone. I need to talk to my dad. Uh, <laughs> Esther, you see, everything is under control, okay? Just relax. As soon as your daddy arrives, I'll give you your phone. Okay? <laughs> Bro, can we just pray again? Yes. Yeah? Please. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord, help us. Help us. We pray you in time. Hello, bro, Balato. I am now in Lagos. Yes, I just arrived and I'm on the way. Did you say Western Point Hospital? Okay, okay. Driver. Driver. Yes. Do you know Western Point Hospital? Yes. I know Western Point Clinic. But it's far. Oh. What is very far? Western Point uh, Hospital in Oregon, in Ikeja. Are we not in Ikeja already? Mm, I know Western Point Hospital, Ikeja. Is that where you are going? Or Western Point Clinic, Igamu? Because there are two Western Points. Oh. No, it is the hospital in Ikeja, not the clinic in Igamu. <sighs> are you sure? Because that would be double money. Oh. It is the hospital in Ikeja. Keep going. Sir, what is the matter? You seem to be nervous and in a hurry. Hope there is no problem. Yes. I need to get to my family urgently. The enemy I went out to fight on the field left the battleground to attack my family at home. What? What enemy has... Just keep going. Ah, oh, sorry, sir. It's good you are here. What happened? Where's my wife? It, it, Where's Samson? Where's Esther? Sir, it's good you are here. Your wife is inside. Please come with me. Please come. Come back. I'm so sorry. What happened? What happened? Uh, 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 morning, Reverend Nelson. Oh. Doctor, it's good you arrived in time. My wife. What happened to her? We had to give her some drugs and we had to sedate her because the shock was too much. Which shock? Please. May I see you in my office? Let me have you in my office, sir. Reverend, you will have to be a man. 
What happened? We lost your son. Eh? My son? <laughs> Which one? Your only son, Reverend. It is Samson. I'm finished. How did he die? He had a serious head injury and we suspect blood rushed to his brain. He was brought in here dead. Oh God, I'm finished. The devil has hit me badly. May I see his body? No problem. But you have to take it easy. Is that okay? I missed my chance and I missed it forever. Oh, something. When I was going on my last trip, you came knocking at the door of my room. You said you wanted to talk to me. But I said I didn't have time for your talk then. Oh. What was it that you wanted to tell me, Samson? What was it? <laughs> Did you want to tell me that I would miss you forever? <laughs> I missed my chance. Uh, all those times that you just wanted to sit down and talk. But I was busy. I'm packing my bags from the administration and preparing my summer notes for another conference. <laughs> I miss those valuable moments. <laughs> Sir, please take heart. Brother Lato, can you see my foolishness? I had a drink yesterday evening. So that the young girl bit my finger. And Jesus told me that the demons have been casting out on the field. I've come back home to attack my family because of my negligence. <laughs> my son! <laughs> my, my wife. Don't worry, she's fine. Sonia, let's leave this room. <laughs> She's fine. Congratulations. Your husband is around. Where is my son? I asked the results of the health injury. He lost much blood. So, you lost him. I am finished. I was only trying to correct him and the devil stepped into this matter. Shouldn't I have corrected him? Should I have left him to his waywardness? Ah! I am finished. 
Your husband is around. I don't want to say him. I never want to set my eyes on him again. <laughs> and and why, if I may ask? He was never there for us where we needed him most. When something was giving me a lot of problems and I needed him around me to give him fatherly corrections. Where was he? He was either on a crusade invitation or giving a message at a conference several hundreds of kilometers away. When I kept sleepless nights, Waiting for something to come back home from night parties. And I spent my days praying for a change for Samson's life. Where was he? It was either in the minister's conference or a joint campus convention. Somewhere in the east or west. And when he eventually comes back home, and the children ought to see or feel him as a father. And I am to have a touch of a husband who has left home for weeks. What did we usually see? A marathon prayer warrior. Or an ardent Bible studies addict who would bury his head in Bible commentaries and seminar notes in his study room. Why would he hastily come back now? When the devil has taken over me while correcting my boy, will he wake him up? Will he make up for all those wasted moments? Will he heal the injuries of the heart? Will he revive the broken spirits and heal the broken hearts? I never want to see him again, doctor. And do you now see your fault in all this? My fault? Do I have any fault in this? Well, yes. I see my faults in marrying a man who loves the Lord Jesus Christ and his ministry, but neglected his home and family. Yes, your husband loves God and the work of the ministry. He has diligently pursued his calling and the expansion of God's kingdom. But unfortunately, however, he has ignorantly neglected his number one calling and ministry, which is his home and family. You also, have you not been neglecting your number one calling as a wife? Excuse me? Your number one calling is well spelled out in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, Ye wives, be submissive to your husband, that if anyone will not obey the word of God, that they, without a word, might win their husband over by the conduct of their wives. Even the little time you wrongfully came home, did you show him enough love? Did you not make the house very hot for him? On some occasions, he came home from his long outreaches. You are never submissive and you are full of nuggets. He didn't love me either. He neglected me and the children a lot of the times too. And that was why you vented out your anger against him anytime he came back from his outreaches? Yes. And on many occasions, 
when he came back from his long outreaches and he needed you on bed, you denied him and neglected him? Yes. And on that night, when your son was injured, you were angry and bitter against your husband. And the devil stepped in through that and inflicted a permanent damage upon your son. He caused it. Akinola caused it. He made me angry. He made the devil take the best part of me. And you cooperated with the devil to do what he did. The day you stopped praying for your husband's life and ministry and concentrated on his mistakes and fault, you stopped being his helpmate and began to neglect your primary role as a virtuous woman. And the day you picked up nagging against your husband instead of praying for him, then you began to neglect your role as the principal helpmate ordained by God to stand by him. And when you ignorantly began to deny him access to your body, then you begin to open the door to satanic manipulation against his heart and home. So do you now see where you have missed it in a big way? I will restore all things when you cry unto me for mercy. Doctor! Please, Doctor! Please, Doctor! 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 Please, Doctor! Doctor! Doctor, what happened? Where's the doctor? Mrs. Mrs. Nelson, <laughs> you just woke up from a long time of unconsciousness. So I'll need you to relax. Your husband is around. I'm sure that calms you down. I want to see my husband. Where is he? I want to see him. I want to see my husband. I want to see him. Want to see him. You just relax. He's around. You will. Okay, he's here. Uh, honey, honey, when we come back from your long outreach, I saw him. Mommy, who did you see? I saw the master. He appeared to me as a doctor. And he showed me all my faults in the matter. Honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry for leaving you behind <laughs> to face all this. <laughs> Where is my son? Um, Mrs. Nelson, calm down. I want to see my son. Wait, wait, wait Miss, Mrs. I want Nelson. to see my son. <laughs> Mrs. Nelson. Jehovah Rapha, the chief physician from heaven. My Lord Jesus Christ, you came to me and spoke to me. You showed me my faults as help me and showed me the way onward. When you were going away, you said you will restore all things. When I call upon you for mercy, I hereby realize my faults and cry unto you for mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Jesus. 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 Jesus.
And I, you and I 